John Legend, recorded from the Skype concert he gave from his living room during quarantine. Beautiful song. Told me recently the quarantine has been a great time to catch up with his wife and kids, but they will destroy his career if he can't get back into the studio. If you've got a hankering to travel, then join us at the top of the hour when the New York Philharmonic plays the national anthems of all the countries we can't currently visit. But first, questionable material with Jack and Brian. You are listening to Questionable Material with Jack Helmuth and Brian Sack. This episode, more homeschooling, coronavirus questions answered, shelter in place. Now, I, look, I don't want you to, you know, throw stones, Brian, because didn't, wasn't there a video uh, of you in a giant Costco fight? Yeah, that was me. What what happened? What, what happened? So you're in line at, just walk us through what happened. Well, um, I had a cart and I, I went to the dairy aisle and I got, I bought, I took all the salted butter. Okay. And so I oh, had, interesting. I had 96 boxes of salted butter. I didn't care about the brand or if it was organic or not. I just loaded up. So I, I cleared them out of salted butter. And as I'm wheeling okay. away, this old lady comes up to me and says, excuse me, sir, uh, could you spare one of those salted butters? And I was like, get Ugh. out of my face or I will kill you. And she kind of looked at me, she was stunned. Uh, and, uh, you know, old people get stunned when you talk to them. Yeah, and so she looked at me and, and, and then just kind of teared up. And then this guy, uh, some Bubba dude steps in. He's like, what's your problem, man? I said, excuse me. And he goes, what is your problem, man? And I said, and I put my arms on my hips. And I was just like, excuse me, sir. And he said, oh, yeah. this lady is just asking for one box of butter. You bought all the butter. Could you please just give her one box of butter? And I was like, talk to the hand. And I put my hand out and he said, yeah. and he looked at it like it was a weapon. Like he's like, well, what is Because you were less than six feet away from him. Right. It's a huge weapon. So he, he, he kind of, he's like, dude, get that thing away from me or you're going to get hurt. I'm like, I'm going to get hurt. Well, I took four Krav Maga classes and I, and I, and I did the hand gesture to suggest that I knew martial arts. Uh -huh. And he was just kind of like, dude. And then he called a friend of his over and he's like, okay. oh, you know, he's like, oh, why don't you talk to Tommy? He was in the Navy. I'm like, oh, the Navy, like Davy from the Billy Joel song. And I turned around this big, big, big guy, huge arms. And I'm like, what's up sailor boy. And he's like, you can call me seal captain Charlie. He tells me, he's like, you're going to take half of that butter and put it back in the fridge. And I said, you're right. You're right. And then I just booked out of there and on high, like as fast as I could, pushing my cart. I was knocking people over, rushing up. I went up to the express lane. I just took out a wad of money and threw it on the counter and just kept going and got right to my car. And they were chasing after me. It was really nerve wracking. I kicked That's over it. the sanitizer stand to kind of trip them. Yeah. And created a pool of, of sanitizer. So I probably did a favor in the, in the course of escaping with my butter, but these people are crazy. They're crazy. Yeah. Those people are crazy Yeah. now. And you were able to escape. I, yeah, I, I got out, but they were banging on my car, banging on the hoods. They were swearing at me and calling me all sorts of names. They called me boomer. And I'm like, no, no, I'm four years short of boomer. I'm generation X dick. And then I, then I peeled out. Ooh. Yeah. And I did a donut, back. did a donut. And then I took off. If the donut was available at my store, it would have sold out. Uh, so, so now I'm confused. Uh, I'm not confused. I have a follow-up question. Yeah. Have you seen that old lady again? Because I know you're in a, you're now in a small town up there. Have you seen her again? I saw her. Yes. I, I saw her on the news. <laughs> oh, cool. Yeah. She made the news. What, uh, did she like win a, like a, a like a, you know, a blue ribbon for something, a jam or jelly? No, it's the weirdest thing. So she was apparently a butter abetic. Butter abetics need a tablespoon of butter every day to stay alive. I didn't know this. If she had said that, then I might have given her a box of butter. She never said that. She just oh. said, excuse me, sir, could you please spare this box of butter? I didn't know. She was a butter yeah. abetic. So what, so what happened to her? Well, she, she passed away. <laughs> She's a butter abetic. They need a tablespoon of butter every day. 
So, geez, just missing that one uh, uh, serving of butter would would do it for her. I'm no doctor. Uh, and Brian, Brian, yeah. Yesterday on the podcast, we said you were a doctor. Oh yeah, I've got medical experience. <laughs> I have medical experience. I've, yeah, I've got a background in medicine. <laughs> Forgot about that. Well, yeah, yeah. So okay, so thank you for all, for all of your updates. So you don't think you have COVID? Well, you know, um, we're just we're still doing that, waiting and waiting and seeing, just self quarantine, okay. making sure we don't okay, contaminate. Any. My wife won't let me go anywhere. I'm not allowed to go anywhere. Which is fine. Sure. I'm just well, they are they are doing this is day two of remote learning. Uh, mm-hmm. I walked into my son's classroom, which is the room he sleeps in, uh-huh. and uh, he was <laughs> playing a submarine game. And I said, oh, good. And I said, is this are you in submarine school? And he goes, no, no, uh, my next class is at ten twenty. So I said, okay. And I, and then I went into my other son's room, and he was actually in the middle of a class. Oh, cool. So you could hear all the kids chat on the chat, uh, discussing stuff with the professor. What were they discussing? Um, ways to, uh, sink submarines. <laughs> Wait a minute. What's something's going on at that school? I think, well, the school is very submarine focused. So, um, they're really training the kids how to be U-boat captains. Oh, that's really good. There's a yeah. hell of a future in that. Yeah. When we all have to live underwater to avoid uh, (laughs) avoid, human contact. Yeah. So, Brian, you had said that this home learning thing reminds me that you had said you were going to do some virtual teaching of my kids. Right. I have a third grader and a second grader. So would you be willing to maybe start a class? Sure. Okay, great. Uh, Let me go get my kids. Hold on. Okay. I'm taking attendance. Eden? What? Are you here or not? I'm here. Okay, my class is full. What is our first class, Eden? Math. Math? I was okay. I yeah. was. Af- I was afraid you're going to say that. Okay. Well, <laughs> let's see. What can I tell you about math? Well, it rhymes with bath, obviously. And Sylvia Plath, who's an author. And uh, if you have a lisp and you say, "I want my coffee decaffeinated," that kind of rhymes in a way. But don't drink decaffeinated coffee because it's pointless. You want real coffee with real caffeine in it. Okay. Okay, So Eden, are we drinking decaf coffee or regular coffee? Regular coffee. Good. And I don't know why I went off on a coffee tangent because we're supposed to be talking about math. Well, math is numbers. Okay. Anything with numbers is math related. Let me check your math aptitude, Eden. Okay, so what about 350,622 times zero? Zero. Uh, what about 1,444,327,526.2 times zero? Zero. Uh, uh, okay, what about 824,635,408.724 times zero? Zero. My God, you're good at math. She doesn't need to learn any more math. Let's move on. Let's talk about dinosaurs. There was a Stomposaurus. Those were the big ones that stomped around. And then there was the teeny hands meanie. And that was the one that kind of ran around with tiny hands and bit things. And then there was a get away from me Saurus. It had all sorts of spikes on its back and a spiky tail. Well, we've covered the dinosaurs. (laughs) What else would you like to learn today? Eden. Nothing. Class dismissed. Uh, Jack. Yes. Does that mean here? Yes. All right. So everybody's here. Now, of course, we like to start with the Pledge of Allegiance. Okay. Right? Uh, so let's please your, your hand on your chest, on your heart. I pledge allegiance. Not your throat. That looks like you're trying hey, to strangle hey, yourself. Sorry, sorry. Uh, um, pledge allegiance. I pledge allegiance. To the flag. Flag. Of the United States of America. United States of America. One nation. One nation. Under God, which was added in the 50s because of the Cold War. I don't care. No, let's keep going. Wow. Brutal. Okay. And uh, we will crush our enemies. We will crush our enemies. Export democracy, whether or not you want it. 
Let's just move on. All right. Uh, so let's do, we'll start off with some history. First of all, do you know why we learn history? Uh, no. Well, because we want to know things that happened in the past so that we don't do the stupid ones in the future, such as mm. open a two front war. Okay. Is opening a two front war a good idea? Yep. No. What are you, Hitler? Uh, That's what he no. thought. And that didn't end well. Okay. Who was the first president of the United States? George Washington. Thank you. So George Washington is on the $1 bill, right? Yep. And one is the number one. George Washington, number one. He's on the $1 bill. Who's on the $5 bill? Abraham Lincoln. Right. So obviously he must be the fifth president. Uh, no, that's not true. What do you know that I don't know? You must know what I know. But if he's on the $5 bill, isn't he the fifth president? Nope. Well, who's on the 10? Um, Alexander Hamilton. Alexander Hamilton is on the $10 bill. So obviously he is the 10th president. Andrew. Uh, doesn't sound familiar. Uh, the $20 bill is Andrew Jackson. So you following the logic, obviously he's the 20th president. Uh, yeah. The hundred dollar bill, Ben Franklin. So he is yeah. the right. 100th president. president of the United States. See, I it's very, very easy. Agree. So that means how many presidents have we had? Well, we've had one, George Washington, Andrew Lincoln, Two? Andrew Lincoln, to Jack, Percy Jackson. And the Hall of Jackson Hall of Notes. And the, who was the one you said? Hamilton, the guy that wrote the musical. Alexander Hamilton. And then the Ulysses S. Grant, uh, who drank a lot. And then Ben Franklin, who started oh, yeah. the post office. Those are all our presidents. That's how you know. You just look in your wallet and you have all the presidents right there for you for easy reference. Yep. Good. Got all the presidents out of the way. Okay. What was. The Louisiana Purchase. Hmm. I don't know. It was a 12 pack of bush and some fishing bait. <sighs> you know who sold us Alaska? No. The Russians under Vladimir Putin sold us Alaska. Big dummies. Hey, Brian, before we go any further, I know yeah. Jack has learned a lot about the man on the moon thing. Yeah. Um, we've talked about talked about it. I know they've talked about it in school. And I know he's got some questions for you about it. Oh, sure. What do you say to people who think the moon land never happened? Why are you in my living room? <laughs> uh, yeah. Anything else? What do they eat and drink in space? Should I tell him? Of course you should tell me. I'm the one who asked this question. Okay. Well, you know how bunnies reproduce? Uh, yeah. Uh, and they, they kind of, you know, one bunny, two bunnies, and then suddenly you have 30 bunnies. Yeah. So there's a, a, a module on the space station that's called the bunny room. And it's just filled with bunnies. And when you're hungry or thirsty, you pop off to the bunny room. You get yourself a bunny. <laughs> and you go back and you float back to whatever you're working on. Then you take a picture out of the window to show people you're in space and like, hey, look, I'm above Earth. Is space class over? Sure, if you'd like it to be. Uh, okay. <laughs> and that terminates uh, space class. <laughs> isn't this school, but just at home? That's correct. And that's why it's called home school. If it were called reform school, then you would be a criminal somewhere else. Oh, so maybe, um, you know, a lot of a lot of times teachers, you know, read a book to the class and have the class ask questions about it. Something, you know, again, Jack's a third grader. So here we go. Uh, let's see. Let me look in my Kindle here. The Shadow of the Sword, which is the foundation of Islam. The Madness of Crowds by Douglas Murray. A One Up on Wall Street. A Hangman's Diary, which is a diary by a guy who used to execute people in the medieval times. 1984 by George Orwell. Do you have any Captain Underpants? Uh, yeah, let me see. Let me look under C. Oh, Captain Under... Oh, yeah. Oh. Well, there's a new Captain Underpants. 
And it, this one is called, and they just came out with it. Uh, it's called Captain Underpants, Do Not Leave Your House. <laughs> and so the, the plot line is basically, uh, there's a global pandemic. And if Captain Underpants leaves his house, there's a good chance he's going to contract a virus and kill Grandma Underpants. <laughs> Grandma Underpants. Yeah. Yeah. So he's being told, just stay at home, shelter in place. Uh, thank God you have the internet. And he basically gets on the internet and, and that's the rest of the book. He was known as a superhero. Now he's known as texting his friends. That's right. That's pretty much, that's the tagline. Did you, you've read this one. You have a yeah, Kindle? I've you have a Kindle too? What else do you need to learn? Mm, well, over well, here at homeschool, I've been learning nothing. So like everything. Maybe. Wow. Thanks. Uh, so uh, what do you not know that you'd like to know? I don't really know what I want to know. I just want to know something because these guys don't teach me like anything. <laughs> Make sure yeah. to make sure to get on Yelp and give your dad's homeschool a review. Five star ratings? No way. Wow, I like you. You're my favorite student. So do you ever have I any think lunch just got canceled, <laughs> you traitor? <laughs> do you ever have any questions? Like uh you look at the sky and you're like, why is the sky blue? Or do you have any kind of questions about anything? Why is the sky blue? Sci I don't know. How hot is the sun? Uh the sun is wicked hot. I got a cool trivia for you. Ooh, nice. All right. The sun is really far the away. Sun. Okay. Yeah. It's so far away that the sunlight you see right now is eight and a half minutes old. Oh, okay. That's interesting. It is, right? And here's another one. If you got into a jumbo jet, like an air, a big commercial airliner and flew to the sun, it would take you 18 years unless you had a connection. Oh, okay. There's a good joke. <laughs> Thanks. Trust me. <laughs> All right. Now we're in philosophy class. Okay. Okay. So how would you describe the color red to a blind person who has never seen? Um, I would say red is... So, who never seen, I would describe red as blood. But he's never seen blood. Uh, cherries. But I've never seen, so I'm blind, okay? Let's say I'm blind. Okay. I've never seen my, I was born blind. I, I have never had sight. How do you describe the color red to me? Uh, I would describe it as, uh, let's see. Tough, isn't it? You wear red pants. But I've never that? seen red. I don't know what red looks like. What does it look like? Describe red to me. That's what the guy's going to say. It looks like red. But I have never seen red. That's why they made the color red. But you don't know what it is. To but, make it to look like red. But you don't know what red is because you've never seen it. That's what I'm saying. I've never seen the color red. I don't know what red or orange or blue, any of these colors, I don't know what they look like. Yeah, and I just said it to you. So now maybe you could get a better, uh, what is it, um, picture in your head what red could be. Dark, kind of dark color. Um, and What is dark? Dark is something dark. Wasn't this question just to be about red? Well, it can be about red. Yeah, I'm just saying, but I don't have anything to reference. That's the thing. If I've never seen before. It's a popular color and it's a very cool color. I got to say. Um, Yeah, so that's what it looks like. But I still don't know what it looks like, Jack. What does red <laughs> look like? Tell me, I'm an old blind man. I've never seen. You've never seen red. Well, then you're never going to see red. Oh, you're a brutal philosopher, aren't you? Uh, just an old blind man who wants to see. What, what is red? Tell me what red is, please. Red is a color. I, we gather that, but what does it look like? It looks like a dark color. A 
dark color. I, I don't know what that is. I'm a just dark a, color. You know, look at this. This I is can't. A, I'm a blind man. You just said, look at this. That's very hurtful, Jack. <laughs> well, you can't see anything. Since you can't see anything, all you can see is black nothing. Exactly. That's exactly. That's my point. What is red? What does it look red like? Is Red is what you can't... Red, if you, if you want to see a color, if you want to see, like... It, since you can't see anything, like, a dark... You're only looking at a dark color, which is... You know, black. You can only see nothing but black. And that is dark, except it just has like, like a cherry. Uh, uh, no, no, no. Uh, it's uh, like, uh, it looks different, but it's dark. If you can't see, you can't see. And all you can see is a dark blank nothing. You're, and that's pretty much what red is, except it looks different. So we've established that red is not black. Okay. Yes. How many dollars but, did I pay for this philosophy class? So, Brian. Yes, Jack. I, I have my son here, because, of course, where else would he be? He's got a lot of questions about coronavirus that... Don't we frankly, all? I don't feel well equipped enough to answer. Okay. So I was wondering if uh, he's in third grade, he, he's, ju he's just turned nine. Um, so I was wondering, you know, let's make sure you have your normal sensitivity, you know, of a nine-year-old third grader. And, sure. Um, we just want to talk about coronavirus. Is that okay? With Dr. Brian. Sure. Okay, great. So uh, Jack, say hi to Dr. Brian. Hi, Dr. Brian. Hello, Jack, who's not a doctor. I'm do you a have a Do you have a doctorate? I don't see one at the end of your name. So I guess not. So who's in charge here? Let's see. Me. Sorry, I'm a little aggressive because I've been cooped up for a couple of days. I'm sorry. Okay. Do you know who started the coronavirus? Yes, I do. And I'm very, very sorry. I was just experimenting in the backyard. <laughs> And I didn't mean to do anything. I just wanted to make some marinade for my big green egg. <laughs> I was hoping to make the world's best marinade. And it's made with bats and pangolins and mixing them together. And I'm sorry. I didn't intend to create a, a global pandemic. I'm sorry if I'm emotional, but I feel kind of bad. <laughs> Anyway, I made this wonderful steak, as is tradition. I smeared it all over my friend who. His name is who. I'm not saying who. And then he got in a plane and he flew back to Hubei Province, which his parents used to own. That's why it's called Hubei Province, because Bay means own. And then things just got out of hand, didn't they? Oh, I'm so sorry. Next question. Uh, okay. The next question is, is the coronavirus really, really bad? It's not great. <laughs> <laughs> it can be bad. So if you have a pre-existing medical condition, so if you've had di diabetes or emphysema, some kind of problems with your respiratory system, it can get a lot worse because of this, of COVID-19. Also, if you talk back to your parents, that gives you a weakened immune system. If you don't do exactly what mommy and daddy tell you to do, that weakens your immune system. If you don't go to bed at the right time, then that can make you very susceptible uh, to to COVID-19. So I think the best course of action is to do exactly what mom and dad say, and even maybe to be proactive and to put yourself to bed without them asking. Okay. Good advice. That's, That's finally good. someone has the courage to say that, you know, the word needs to get out or everybody's going to go crazy. <laughs> um, I have a question. Oh, good. Sure. Um, my next question is, does many, 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 many people have the coronavirus? Um, 
Well, it depends. If you believe the liberal media, then hundreds of thousands of people have it. But according to my favorite website, which is coronavirus facts with an X dot com net org, uh, they say it's a conspiracy by the Illuminati to take over the world. What is the quarantine and how does it work? You have to get together with your family if you have one in your house. So it's okay. kind of like it's like you're practicing being Mormon. You're going to play board games at night with your family and you can't go to Starbucks. OK. Oh, OK. So what would you do if your dad comes into your room tomorrow morning and his eyes are red, his nose is running and he's coughing? I would say, were you playing the coughing game? Exactly. And then what you're going to need to do is you're going to say, Daddy, can you come outside? I want to show you something in the tool shed. Okay? Okay. And you're going to go down to the tool shed and you're going to say, Daddy, I think it's in there. I heard a noise. Can you check it out? And your dad is going to be half out of it because of the 104 degree fever. And so he's going to listen to you and he's going to go into the tool shed. And when he's in the tool shed, I want you to close the tool shed door and lock it with the padlock I gave your mommy. Okay. And then okay. you're going to scramble the, the padlock. Now your daddy's going to play a funny game with you called let me out. And he's going to be screaming, open the door, Jack Jr. Open it now. This isn't funny. I don't feel well. And you just have to play along with the game. Pretend you're a Star Wars character. And so as your dad's pounding on the door and begging you, you just got to pretend you don't understand his language. Because you're, you're from Sounds a different like planet. Jabba the Hutt. Exactly. Pretend your dad, who physically resembles Jabba the Hutt, also sounds like Jabba the Hutt, and you don't speak Hutt. So you're going to hear like, oh, oh, and just pretend it's gibberish and then just run away from it. Okay? Okay. Then you just got to go back inside, close the door, and find a nice book to read. I've written a couple. I'd appreciate you if you uh, got on your mommy or daddy's Amazon account and ordered them. And I, I, I would do multiple quantities just to have them. Okay. Okay. Multiple copies. Wow. And get yourself something wow. nice too. Get yourself oh, a nice yeah, toy. Yeah, yeah, of course. And something for your sister. What happens if we run out of food? So let's say you run out of food. Okay. Your daddy's locked in the tool shed. Yeah. Uh, and your mommy needs your help. Now you're the man of the house. Okay. So you've got to rise to the occasion. Oh, yeah. What you need to do is you create a map of your neighborhood and you mark down all the houses. Okay. And you have to go one by one and okay. figure out who your neighbors are. So let's say next door neighbor is an able-bodied man in his forties with two or three kids and a wife and uh, she goes to the gym. So they're in good health. You don't want to mess with them. The next house after that. Okay. Is it an old lady? Yes. Does she live alone? Yes. Her husband passed away two years ago. Perfect target. She's going to have a bunch of food. She's not going to be able to fight against you, your sister and your mother. Okay. So then you go, this is where the problem is. All the tools that you need to get the food from the old lady are in the tool shed with your daddy. So what you need to do is find out there's a fire extinguisher in your house. You got to get that fire extinguisher. Okay. You're going to get outside the tool shed. You're going to have mommy hold the fire extinguisher and point into the door. You're going to say, daddy, I'm here to let you out. You're going to unlock the padlock and open the door. Your daddy's going to try to come out. That's the cue for mommy to spray daddy in the face with the fire extinguisher, which is going to cause him to stumble back into the tool shed. At that moment, you and your sister, you run in, you get shovels, you get hose, you get whatever kind of instruments you, you have. You grab those, you get out, you close the door, you lock it. Now your daddy's going to play the I'm crying and I need you. Why is my family left me game? You don't want to play that game right now. You got an old lady to get food from. Exactly. What happens if we run out of toilet paper? Well, I'm married to a woman who grew up under communism. So they know how to make toilet paper. So what I recommend you do is you go night clubbing. You meet yourself a, a nice Polish girl or someone who grew up under communism and knows how to make ersatz toilet paper. Oh, oh, okay. 
Do you have a laminating machine? Yep. You do? All right. So take a piece of toilet paper, maybe three sheets, and you run it through the laminating machine. Now you have toilet paper that can be wiped down every time. <laughs> oh. Oh. No? Maybe I better go. Now, you must be pretty rattled about what, what things are doing to the market, how, how this, uh, what's going on with the uh, economic situation in America. Yeah, who isn't? Yeah. Well, but, you know, you, you do consider yourself, I mean, you uh, somewhat of an expert in finance. Is that right? Oh, yeah, definitely. I know a lot yeah. about finance. Yeah, and because you're, you're like a, you're a professor at, um, do you, do you go across, do you go over to Yale to, to adjunct? I pop over there every once in a while to, That's great. So to it, speak maybe monies. You could, yeah. Maybe you could give some, um, maybe we could sort of talk finances. I think that's something that people are feeling very uneasy about and maybe you could maybe put their mind at ease and answer oh, yeah. some questions. Good point. Yes. Yeah. Happy to help. So the stock market gained a thousand points yesterday yeah. and it lost another thousand points today. Yeah. Downsy doodles. It's, Downsy doodles. Is that what it's called? Downsy doodles when it, when it doesn't go up. Oh, what is it? What have, what do you call it when it goes up? Upsy wiggles. Upsy wiggles. Okay. Yeah. So upsy so, wiggles or downsy doodles. So yesterday we had an upsy wiggles day. Today we have a downsy doodles day. Oh man. It's, it's like I'm on the floor of the, of the NYSE. And yeah. this is really, this is great, Brian. Um, so you study economic patterns and everything. Yeah. Where do you see this going just in terms of the markets. It's going to do an up and down thing. Okay. Because if you look at the beta and the deltas, uh, it, uh -huh. it, it's, uh, it, it does an up and down. So it goes okay. like, do, 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 ups, wiggles, downsy doodles, ups, wiggles, downsy doodles. And there'll be a lot of that. You've got a lot of anxious uh, investors out there. Yes. What are you recommending for the people you advise? What are you recommending um, people do? Where are you recommending they put their money? Your portfolio right now should be, 60% equities. Okay. Uh, 20% bonds. Yep. And 20% pistols or rifles. I would, I would opt for both. You want to like a sidearm and then a rifle of some sort, uh, and a decent scope. Now why I understand, I understand the first two because I have a little bit of money in the markets, but I don't necessarily understand why uh, are we putting 20% of our funds into, uh, uh, guns? Well, Right now, everybody's got a ton of toilet paper and a ton of pasta. Yes. Okay. But those two things are going to cancel each other out. Oh. All right. And at some point, people's pasta slash TP supplies will be depleted and they're going to be looking around to replenish their supplies. And that's when it, it turns into the purge. <laughs> okay. So what, what are you forecasting? Mm -hmm. What are you forecasting during the purge? What, what, what's, what are things going to look like a week from now? Well, I'm, I'm hoping, you know, my clients who have invested heavily 20% of their portfolio in semi-automatic weapons should be able to weather the storm. That's a term uh -huh. we use in uh, finance. Oh, okay. So they good. can weather the storm. Uh, what I recommend is that, you know, if they have any, um, any gold, things like that, they keep it in their attic. They put their sons in the top windows as kind of snipers. Mm -hmm. And then they're downstairs on the main floor to defend against any intruders. What do we do with our daughters? I would set her up to deliver suppressing fire. Mm -hmm. No, that makes, that makes sense. What, that, there is a school of thought that you use your daughter as bait. Well, in the financial industry, uh, there's, a, there's a little term we use called uh, using your daughter as bait. Oh, yeah. 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 That's yeah. the one. Yeah. So um, now this is not a home defense scenario. This is a material acquisition scenario. Okay. So what you'll do is you'll, you'll bring your car somewhere and you're going to put up, pop up the hood and you want to have your daughter standing outside in a bikini. And like she was just on the way to the pool, the community pool. Uh -huh. And she's standing there. I would take mm -hmm. a cigarette or a mm -hmm. cigar and just put a cigar mm -hmm. in the inside the engine block. So that you just see a little smoke coming out and she's going to stand there kind of shaking her head, looking at the, the smoke coming out of the, the hood. Now the rest of the family is actually up in the woods <laughs> in kind of a position to um, entrap whoever stops. So okay. you're going to wait 
and you want to wait for the right person to fall for it. So it, let's say, uh, you know, some old lady pulls up, yeah, do you need help? She's got this beat up car. She doesn't have anything you want. Okay. okay. So you just have your daughter just say, no, ma'am, I'm all set. My big brother's on the way. Okay. And then she'll drive up. What you're hoping for is like a fresh direct truck. <laughs> all right. If you see a fresh direct, then she waves down the fresh direct truck. You know, he gets out to come help. And that's when the ambush happens. I see. Okay. You're going to take him. You're going to tie him up uh, and you're going to drive away in the fresh direct truck. And then you have your daughter drive away in her old car. And so where you, where do you tie up the fresh direct uh, driver? I just, I'll leave him on the side of the road. Oh, okay. There's no reason to take him out unless he resists. And that's really something you need to let him know early on. Okay. You can, and you can say something like in the finance industry, we say this can be easy or this can be hard. Okay. That's kind of an indication that, you know, you should just listen to what I'm saying and go along with my uh, investment advice mm -hmm, mm -hmm. versus fighting my investment, uh, investment advice. Okay. That, yeah. Again, these are fantastic financial terms. This is, I wish I had the kids up here learning yeah. this stuff. Yeah. Like, was, like econo you know, economics 101. Yeah. That's great. Um, is there anything to, you know, the, I, I know it's outdated. Dowries seem like potentially a way to replenish your supplies. Is that something that you would recommend? Yeah. I mean, if you have enough daughters and yep. you got to find, you want to find somebody who has something you need. So you don't want to just throw your daughter at any old person you know, without knowing what their stocks are like. I see. And by stocks, I mean, not equities. I mean, what's in their closet. How do you find the right person to sell your daughter off to so you can have more stuff? Breaking and entering. Oh. So what we do is we do, um, this is a financial term, due uh -huh. diligence. So you want to do your due diligence at night, find a property that looks appealing to you. Okay. And at night you want to create a distraction, kind of maybe if they're off the road, you create a distraction in the road so that that person's either engaged or leaves the house to help. Mm -hmm. And then you have somebody get into the house and check out the food stocks and the toilet paper that's supply. That's smart. Okay. Once you've figured which house is your mark, that's the one you're going to start using your daughter to acquire the dowry from. And if they have a ton of stuff and you have two daughters, then you're just going to come back a week later. That's smart. With another daughter. Oh, wow. Man, we should have had more kids. Yeah. I don't have any daughters, unfortunately. So that's not a route that uh, is open to me, but then, I do have two sons. Um, is it, do you think the situation is going to be dire enough that you're going to have to marry off one of your sons? If I did, you know, obviously I'd want a, a decent dowry. Yeah. Which is why I'd put a slap a wig on him and call him Betty. Yeah. That's, it's not, it's not a bad plan. Yeah. And they might be like, oh, your Betty seems awfully hairy. Uh, your <laughs> Betty sounds like a man, looks like a man, mm -hmm. uh, is breaking all the Olympic weightlifting records. So uh, you know, what's the deal with Betty? And I'm just going to be like, dude, take it or leave it. Apocalypse. Come on. Yeah. You take what you can get. Yeah. Which is a financial term right yeah. back at you. Take what you can get. There you go. Yeah. Wow, yeah. yeah. So you now when you do this with your son and he becomes a Betty and, um, <laughs> Yeah. You know, are you going to be like, which, which child do you make a Betty? I assume it would be the youngest because the oldest is first in line to inherit your land. Is that right? And he's shaving. Right. Gosh. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah. Yeah. So you've got 13 year old, 13. I think is where it's at. Yeah. Brian, this has been great advice so far. Thank uh, you, Jack, for this chance to share my knowledge with the people out there. No, it's, it's, it's our pleasure. Really, it's, really. Thank you. Um, I can see on Skype, by the way, that, uh, cause I, we've got video to chat up is that you've got a gigantic dictionary there. Yeah, I do have a dictionary. Yeah. It's the Oxford English dictionary. It is all the words. Mm -hmm. all it is all them. the words, all the words. Oh, that's really exciting. All the English words are here at my <laughs> disposal. Oh my God. Are you the guy who's been stockpiling words? Uh, I've been hoarding words. I've been hoarding. Oh my gosh. I've hoarded. So I have several of these dictionaries. You can't just have all the words. We're going to need that for the internet. I, I have the words I need and my family needs. I'm providing words for them. 
Well, can I get some of those words as your friend? Hmm. Let's talk about it later (laughs) when times are different. All right. All right. Fair enough. Fair enough. Any other big companies that you see maybe a little bit more under the radar companies that are primed to move uh, uh, up sea wiggles? Uh, Definitely the airlines. Mm -hmm. Okay. Pump a ton of money into the airlines. Smart. Because after this, people are really going to want to get out of the house and go somewhere. And they're just going to hop on planes. Just like, I don't care where this plane lands. Just take me there. I don't care if it's Cleveland or Taipei or whatever. Just, I want to, I want to be there now. Yep. So that'll okay, be, that's smart. that'll be great for the airline industry. And then of course, MCs. Yeah, well, what's, what's MCs? Like music DJs, <laughs> uh, you know, music DJs are going to be in high demand. People are going to want to let loose. They want somebody who's like a mix master, who's really, who's got the fat jams and can play them on a s- stereo loudly. Okay. And, okay. you know, and so you're going to want to invest in these guys. They're going to get flown all over the world to like Ibiza and Berlin and all these places to just do their jamming uh, with their turntables. Wow. Yep. How do you pick a good DJ to invest in? Um, the Skrillex one. <laughs> I don't know what Skrillex means. I think it's a DJ. I would invest in him. Oh, it's a fella? If I know about him, he must be huge. Okay. So, okay. So that's sort of is like, that's the Google of DJ world. Probably. Okay. Skrillex. All right. I'm going to, okay. I'm going to call Merrill Lynch right now and put a bunch of money in Skrillex. Right. Okay. Great. Dead mouse. And okay. I'm writing all these down. I'm going to put a bunch of money in that fella. DJ Tim. DJ Tim sounds like, sounds baller. Yeah. So yeah, you want to invest in DJs. They're going to be playing the music that we're going to want to hear. The kids are want to get out and, and just jam and dance. Yep. Uh, also, I would invest in diapers. Okay. Why is that? Because there's going to be a crap ton of kids nine months from now after 45 to 60 days of, of staying at home. Yes, yeah, sort of like be, how there's always a uh, a bump in kids after um, nine months after Christmas and yeah. uh, New Year's Eve, yeah, and Valentine's Day. Exactly. So this is funny because you know right now, okay, boomer is that kind of insult, huh, boomer, yep. right? Sure. But we've got a new wave of boomers coming, made by the people screaming, "Okay, boomer." That's right. So that's irony. That is irony. Yeah. Is that a financial term? Uh, yeah. It's a, it's a mining term. Oh, oh, okay. So you'd be like, oh, this mountain, is it, is it good for resources? Yeah. It's irony. Oh boy. You can also yeah, say it, copperific. <laughs> Gosh, you know so much. It's really outstanding. Um, Tungstentational. <laughs> okay. Let's, let's, let's call it a day on that one. Okay. Silica rageous. Law of diminishing returns. Tinnable. <laughs> Does that remind you of the tinnitus in your ears right now? Yeah. I've been reminded of that because it's so quiet here. <laughs> yeah, but you have. Um, any other advice? What if, what if someone is sort of sitting on a lot of cash right now? Someone who had been waiting to invest, what would you recommend they do? Have them Venmo me the money and I will take care of it from that point onward. Okay, great. Is there um, a way we can Venmo you? Yeah, my account is, uh, it's N-X-T-M-A-D-O-F-F at Venmo. That's one of those just a bunch of silly letters that don't even make sense. It's a jumble of letters that mean nothing. Okay, cool. Well, um, You send me the money, give me a little note, like what do you want to invest in? What kind of returns do you want? And I'll make it happen. That's great. Yeah. Okay, well- um, Ryan, this has been fantastic financial advice. Uh, you know, uh, on behalf of our listeners, uh, we we all thank you. Thank you, Jack. I'm glad I can help. You're a huge help. Well, it's uh, that's all the time we have for this questionable material. Yeah, Jack. So when are we doing another one? Uh, anytime, because actually all we do is have time for questionable material. Yay! <laughs> that was questionable material. Make sure to subscribe to the podcast. Make sure to review the podcast. Make sure to visit qmpodcast.com for episodes, show notes, and bonus material. 